What's up, Reefers? Welcome to uh, another episode of Alex Pora Corliss. This is Alex Wilson, your host, and this is the good, the bad, and the ugly, and more manure reefing series. That's right, where I'm adding chicken manure, dehydrated chicken manure, to my reef aquarium. So let's see what's going on. Alright guys, so here's an update, and this is uh, showing my CO2 monitor, and it has since dropped down just uh, by itself here, it's uh, 427 parts per million on the CO2, so yeah, that probably is accurate, being that the average um, um, global readings are 420, uh, according to the internet here, at least last year. So yeah, that should give me an indicator there as far as my uh, how good I'm, air circulation, fresh air I'm getting in here. So yeah, keep an eye on that guy. And check out the aquariums. Here's the quarantine system. And I did place an order with uh, Abe over there at Coral Euphoria. So I'm going to thank him. I'm getting about uh, eight different acroporas from him so hopefully I'll be able to keep him alive and the idea is that uh, I've uh, the system here with the the green slimer lived in here so hopefully it's ready it's got Coraline now to going pretty good and I think it's a good idea you know to try to get up to that um, the 70 70 percent of the square footage of your aquarium covered with either the coralline algae or the live corals so that uh, you know they don't really uh, for them you know so the, the corals will be dominated over the algae and so what I want to do is uh, that's why I you know get get quite a few of them in there you know for the not just the quarantine aquarium but you know for afterwards the main display right so yeah, here's a disco soma over here, still there. And let's check out the main display. And still got, just after one day, a whole bunch, still got the algae bloom on the glass. Crazy algae bloom. Heliophungus, looking good, settling in. Goniopores. The old tang, still eating the chicken manure. The first chicken manure over his nori, so I don't know, strange little thing, but not the clams. Probably gonna go ahead and put the purple maxima there up, up on a rock and have them just uh, latch on to one of the smaller rocks. That way it'll be um. Won't be, you know, because it, it detached itself from this base, to, you know, the little frag rock that had them on. And so otherwise they just bounce around, they just, uh, you know, flopping all around all the time. So, you know, they're much more comfortable, more stable if you can get them on there. So, like I put this, uh, the smaller golden, golden Maxima right there onto it's the rock where it's probably, it's going to attach right there probably eventually. So, I'm going to do probably something similar with the purple one. But let's check it out. Everything else on this side looks pretty good. So, but yeah, look ready to get these uh, acroporus in here along with that uh, green slimer. Ordered a bunch of different ones. Uh, one that comes to mind is a green, no, blue Bali uh, slimer from uh, Top Shelf Aquatics. So, hopefully, that will do really well in here. And uh, I got these guys here out of there. I'll put them against the against the glass at the back here. And of course, it's, it's especially hard to clean around the silly uh, intake line right there. See, it's uh, this aquarium has an intake on the bottom, and then it has the, on the top. So Jake Adams was right. I, it doesn't make any sense to have an intake down here at the bottom. I should just have the one on the top. So it certainly makes it hard to clean right there. It gets in the way. It's definitely. Um, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, J well, Jake Adams, I know you're listening, so get me some immortal tour if you can. I'll have to uh, send, I'll send you an email or something. Uh, what else do we got here? 
that's it. Got these to get a close up of the Supercordias. Photocordias there. And see that one of the ones, the green ones, it didn't have the. It's not on a frag plug. It's hard to just flop them down there in the sand because then they're blow, just blowing around. And he did attach to, you know, a piece of the crushed coral. But then it's definitely flopping around. So I. Put him down that little crevice right there, see how he does. He'll probably latch on right there. And the same thing with the fuzzy mushroom right there. I just flopped him on the back right there. I thought it would, it would, uh, you know, kind of, that's kind of just went with, with the mushrooms with putting them vertical. That way they'll get a little bit less light. They'll kind of shade each other a little bit on some of them. At least that was, and putting them off to the sides of the aquarium. At least that was my idea with that. So, but you know, I could just flop them flat probably anywhere. And um, these fuzzy mushrooms here seem to tolerate the higher lighting conditions, at least more, more, a little bit more readily than the disco somo or the other types of uh, rhodactus. Like I have the the purple and the orange rhodactus. But um, yep. And then I have the my coral scrubber right here, coral scrubber down there. So I'm gonna have it on a reverse cycle, going a total of uh, 12 hours of uh, of light. And, and it, well, actually, I have it on you know 24 hours of just like well the other 12 of, of moonlight, like right there. I think that's just like it. Uh, the radion is at uh, two percent or one percent, and then so then I type twelve hours of light, and um, yeah. So what I'm gonna do though is bring it back a little bit so they overlap a couple hours, and this is just so that I can um, kind of observe observe it the corals here like for a couple hours when they turn on, so I can see how how they're, well they're opening up a little bit better. Because otherwise it's off, and then I can't even see how they are opening up during the day. So, check back on that for a future update. And, <clears throat> yep, so I guess that's it. Uh, but, so, looking forward to getting these new corals in there. Alright guys, so check for the next update. Happy reefing, bye.